This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. You just tried to call your friend overseas, but instead you accidentally got... 911, what's your emergency? There are some ways you can prevent that from happening. Find out how on the E911 Talk Podcast, Episode 115. Recorded Friday, November 23rd, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, product line manager for emergency services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. One of the biggest problems that plague E911 call takers and dispatchers are false or accidental 911 calls. Often they come from children playing with uninitialized cell phones. Yes, they can still dial 911. And we've all heard the humorous stories about youngsters needing help with their math homework. 911 emergency. Yeah, I need some help. What's the matter? I have takeaways. And some adults acting like children when they don't get their Western double cheeseburger at the drive-thru. Sheriff's Department, how can I help you? I'm over here at Burger King right here in San Clemente. I asked them four different times to make me a Western barbecue burger. This is not a criminal issue. That is, that, you're supposed to be here to protect me. Well, what are we protecting you from, a wrong cheeseburger? Okay. Okay? okay. Bye-bye. Oh. Probably the biggest cause of 911 misdials is the proverbial butt dial, when users accidentally hit the speed dial sequence for 911 on their mobile phone while it's in their pocket. Enterprise PBXs are also a common source of calls to 911 when the user didn't intentionally plan on making that call. The problem here is that in many cases, the PBX doesn't report station-level caller ID, or if it does, in many cases, the carrier will overwrite that information with the main billing telephone number on 911 calls. Now, for users that have implemented an E911 remediation plan in their building, part of that plan will include on-site notification. And even though a generic number may be reported to the 911 center, detailed information on the station placing the call is available internally. Obviously, this information is critical when someone actually has an emergency, as you know exactly where they're located and can provide immediate help, but it also provides valuable information on 911 missile events if programmed properly in the PBX. Over the years, I've had several calls from users that were frustrated about the police department knocking on their front door claiming a 911 call came from the building, yet no one in the building would admit to making that mistake. On-site notification is the best evidence in this case in remediating that problem. But it might not be an individual that's actually making the call. Many times, fax machines will have the destination number programmed incorrectly and they'll be making the 911 call. Not only is this extremely annoying to the police department, as the fax machine tries over and over and over and over to connect with the far end, quite often it's very difficult to locate the device without going on a physical search. Even then, when the missile number is stored in the memory buffer of the machine, it can become extremely difficult to locate it within a large enterprise. Some of the common causes of missiles are area codes that start with 9-1, People dial 91, then glance at the phone number to continue dialing with 1 plus the area code and number. The PBX sees 911 area code and number and processes the emergency call after the first three digits. Some central office codes also start with 91. In this case, users dial 91 and then get an extra one by mistake. Again, processing the call is 911. There's also the case in dialing India. Specifically, the country code for calling India is 91, and the city code for calling New Delhi is 11. If the caller forgets to dial the international dialing code prefix 011, the digits 9111 would be transmitted. Again, as soon as the telephone system receives 911, the remaining digits are ignored and the call is routed to the PSA. How about dialing Nuremberg, Germany? This is an easy one, as the city code for dialing Nuremberg is 911. Enough said about that. Special thanks to George Foscu and Dispatch Magazine Online and their article on 911 missiles. As always, you can find the direct link to that article in my blog at www.avaya.com forward slash Fletcher. In an MLTS PBX system, there are two parts of the problem that need to be addressed. The first is fairly simple, and it involves something that you should already have programmed in your system, and that's crisis alert or on-site notification. This is the internal indication that provides an alert when an emergency call is placed, and the extension number and name of the station placing that call is displayed to the station, as well as an audible alert on a programmed button. 
Most of our third-party DevConnect solutions also offer this functionality at much greater detail and can provide screen pop alerts, SMS messages, or even emails. The solutions take the basic information delivered through Crisis Alert or on-site notification and then enhance it with additional details such as distinguishing between multiple stations with bridged appearance numbers. But this is only half the solution, and a little bit of programming needs to happen to catch the true missiles. On the CS-1000, programming is fairly simple and includes an actual missile feature. This feature is either on or off and looks for additional digits being dialed after any emergency services directory number, or ESDN, is processed. The options are either to allow or ignore the last number in the ESDN, and how long the system should wait after recognizing the ESDN to look for additional digits. For example, if you allow the last number to repeat, then both 911 and 9111 would be considered an emergency call, but 9112 through 9119 would be considered a misdial. If you chose not to allow the last number to repeat, then 911 plus any digit, including a 1, would be considered a misdial. The default timer is set to 4 seconds, which seems to work for most instances. However, it is adjustable if you need it to be. The final option is how you want the missile calls to terminate. Your choices are a busy signal, intercept, the attendant console, or a recorded announcement device. I recommend the RAN so that you can actually play an announcement to the caller explaining that they may have just misdialed 911 and if it is an actual emergency to hang up and dial again. Now, with this programming in place, any 911 call or 911 misdial will trigger specific alerting that can be acted upon. In fact, a special indication is presented for 911 misdials, and if supported in the third party application, will be included in the on screen display. Now, for users that have the CM, the same logic will apply and can be programmed as follows. In addition to having 911 in your ARS tables flagged as crisis alert, Add the additional entries of 9111 through 9119 and also terminate them to an announcement that tells the user that they were trying to dial 911, they've probably misdialed and to hang up and call again. Now, one more thing, make sure you mark these entries as crisis alert so that crisis alert reporting will notify on-site personnel and they can investigate to make sure that it wasn't an actual 911 call attempt. Now, before you do anything, make sure you run your game plan through your internal risk management folks, as well as HR, before you start. And it's not a bad idea to talk to your local PSAP as well. If you haven't done this before, it's a great time to start building a relationship with these folks and getting their input on what your plan is. Regardless of what you do to allow for or deny emergency calling in your PBX, make sure that once you've completed your programming, you test your configuration to make sure that you haven't accidentally blocked any valid 911 calls. Now, of course, before you test, you need to find out the local non-emergency number for your local police department and coordinate those testing activities with whatever their local policy dictates. A little bit of planning, a little bit of common sense, and you can make a big difference on eliminating 911 missiles out of your PBX. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency? This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN.